Hi, welcome back. I'm Stephanie Sullivan Ruiz, and we've been talking about HTML5 video in the last few episodes. We're now going to wrap up with the final couple of creative ways that you can actually implement HTML5 video in your page now. Some of these you may not have heard of. Um, the first one I want to talk about is YouTube. Now, you may know that YouTube had their HTML5 beta, but you can actually, without giving YouTube even a hint, if you're willing to put your uh, video up on YouTube, you can give it away, put it up, and you can use YouTube's embed code and put it right into your page. I went ahead and grabbed that. So let's go ahead and insert that snippet. So this is just the typical YouTube video embed. And what it actually does is you don't see anything here about native video fallback. And in fact, um, I got kind of thrown off by trying to do this for a client. And I was doing all this research, how can I make YouTube serve HTML5 on the iPad? And my client, while I was researching, went ahead and just put some YouTube embedded video into a page, put it up, and pinged me and said, hey, Steph, I can see it fine. OK, so that's when I learned that YouTube actually is just fine with deciding what to serve. So this is what the YouTube uh, will look like. Notice, like the Kaltura video, it also has a big play button here, or your regular play button here. And the browser Chrome is different. But it will be the same across all devices. And if it sees that you're on uh, any kind of an iDevice, it will then serve native. In this uh, browser, you can see that it is actually serving Flash. So if Flash is available, it serves Flash. If it detects an iDevice or where Flash is not available, it will try to serve native video. So that's a very simple way you can do it if the main thing you're worried about is serving iDevices. Now there's one other that I want to talk about. And this one, in my opinion, is probably the way I'm going to do things for now. Because for now, while we're dealing with this encoding battle, if you will, um, while we're dealing with you know big companies that already encode their H.264 in 10 different ways, and to add two more encodings really taxes their servers and their manpower. If all we're really concerned about is that our iDevices, iPads, and iPhones that don't have Flash are able to see it, then perhaps there's another way. Video can be, the video tag can be embedded in an object tag, just like the object tag can be embedded in the video tag. So I'm going back to our original page, and I'm simply going to reverse the order. So I'm going to grab my video with the source here, and I'm just going to cut it out. And remember this little area where I can add all this fallback within Flash. I'm going to go ahead and place my video there. And let me get the closing video tag, because we want our tags to close in order. And I will go ahead and close that right here. Notice I left the fallback image within the video tag. You need the poster fallback image to be within the most deeply nested. So if you're nesting the flash in the video tag, put the fallback there. If you're nesting the video tag in the flash, you want to put the fallback there. Okay. So it's as simple as that, except I could leave this encoded three ways, and it will play just fine. It's going to look first for Flash. And if Flash is not available, it's going to then look for um, the native. But what I actually want to do to make things simple for my encoding people, I'm just going to pull out my AUG and WebM. Now, I'm serving MP4 or H.264. My Flash Swift is actually using the very same file that I encoded for native. It's pulling that into Flash, and this is playing it natively uh, within the iDevices. Now, I could have done the same with a video tag when I embed my Flash. I could have simply served H.264. But there's a bug or a problem or something that's got to be fixed in Firefox that if even though it can play Flash, if Flash is the fallback and it has seen that native video tag and you haven't given it an AUG uh, encoded video, it won't play anything. So video tag, once you've put that in as the holder for the object, you've got to make sure you encode for everybody. But if you put Flash in as the holder for the video tag, you can then use simply H.264. In my way of thinking, this is probably for now, I'm not saying forever, but for now, this may be the better way for a lot of us to do it. One encoding 
and works everywhere as Flash always has, but now we've covered the iDevices as well. Now, I've heard some people say that there is, uh, one of the beauties of the video element is that it's more accessible, it's part of the page. That is actually a fallacy. The video element is certainly fairly accessible. Flash is actually more accessible. I've worked with the Web Standards Project for years, and as such, we've worked with Adobe, or it was Macromedia back in the day, to really try to get accessibility and web standards built into the products. And one of the things I'm very proud of them about is, over the years, Flash has been made more and more accessible. So the, the issue that I've heard people talking about is tabbing into Flash, tabbing out, stealing focus. That is actually not an issue anymore if Flash is built properly. Let's remember, all these tools need to be used properly. You'll find bad versions of Canvas. You'll find bad versions of Flash. You'll find bad developers everywhere. But Flash can be made very accessible, and especially when it comes to closed captioning. Now, the spec is right now looking at accessibility for the video element, and I believe that one day they will come to that. I hope they will one, one day come to that. But right now, it hasn't gone to last call because they're still looking at what needs to happen and working that out. So for now, if you need to subtitle, and we do have laws that mandate it for some people as of last month, we need to make sure that you go ahead probably and back yourself up with Flash. Now, let's look at one final slide on when we might want to use native and when we might want to use Flash. Certainly both are very valid choices. As you saw with the embed tag being made legal, the, the W3C was never intending to kill plugins. They were intending to give us a simpler way to do certain things. So if you want to render multimedia on iDevices, you may want to go native. Creating simple things, 2D games, good reason to go native. And native, of course, can mean Canvas as well, right, and SVG. This is the one I love. Do you want to create an unblockable banner ad? Make it natively in Canvas. The flash blockers, flash being used for advertising, very lot, which is probably the reason that a lot of people say, I hate flash, right? I hate those ads too. But if uh, many flash blockers will block those ads. If you're a company that wants your banner ads unblockable, do it in Canvas. Everyone will be forced to watch things jump around on the page and they'll start hating Canvas then. <laughs> but if you need content protection, if you need DRM, you will want to go Flash if you're that kind of company. There will never be DRM built into native video. That has been said by the powers on high. They can't do it with an open source code. If you need simple closed captioning, right now you definitely want to go Flash. Uh, the difficulties of doing native closed captioning are that you're having to attach it with JavaScript. You'll see some proofs of concept, but for now, if you were to stop the video, the, the tracking loses track. You can't move back, you can't stop, because the track has no cue points or key points where it can actually know exactly where you are. So for now, we want to do this. If you need adaptive bitrate streaming, right now you need to use Flash. Solutions may come up later, but for now they do not exist. And especially if you have uh, some need for integrated advertising engines, really good analytics, um, you will want to use Flash for that as well. And remember, what we've been talking about is the video element, not the Flash used in other ways. Flash is a very powerful thing, as is Silverlight, as is QuickTime. They can do things outside of video. So just remember, we've been discussing ways that we can integrate native video but there are still things that we're going to want to use plugins for in the future. And that wraps up our discussion of HTML5 video. It was great to have you, and please check out my site. I've got lots of HTML5 and CSS3 resources because it's up to you to stay on top of things. Right now, things are moving fast. Keep your eye on it. It's very exciting. There's great stuff coming. And I have a tendency to Twitter a bit. Um, and if I find good resources, I always mention them there as well. And that would be at Steph Soul. See you there.